red or black? You don't want to know. But an eyeful of you goes a long way into soothing financial pain. Married men like you. I'm surprised I still have that effect on you. Hey, Blaze, come on. I'm married. I'm not dead. And it's always been my experience that beautiful women always know their effect on men. Mm -hmm. Well, we were quite a team yesterday, weren't we? When we engineered that meeting between Christina and Ethan so they could get a chance to say they were sorry to each other. Well, you engineered it. I just kept an eye on your caboose. Uh, well, it was a gamble. And it paid off. Yeah, I want to thank you for what you did for Ethan. He needed that. It was very generous of you. So, what now? What are you uh, up to? Excuse me? When a goddess tells me that we make a good team, it means she wants something from me. Oh, Luke, you're still a cynic. No, baby, I'm not a cynic. I'm a romantic who has seen the world. You were done with the chuckles. You went away, and suddenly you walked through my door. I've been wondering. What's up? What do you want? What's the plan, and where do I fit into it? Ah, there you are. Now, things are so tedious at Windermere these days. I just needed a nice visit with you to boost my spirits. I'm busy here. Oh, so I see. You're the one with the unfortunate name, aren't you? Apple, blanket, sky. Of course, sky. <laughs> well, at least you keep your dalliances in the family. The hottest star is closed. Oh, I, I know, and I was so hoping to have you all to myself. Be a dear, won't you? Oh, well, I wouldn't dream of imposing. I know how much Luke loves his time with you, Helena. Oh, please, no, please Luke, don't go. not to worry. I'll be back. <sighs> Alone at last. Now, let's get down to business. Let me get my garrote and chainsaw. That sounds intriguing, but it's not that kind of business. That's the only kind of business you and I have, darling. No, no, we have other business. You can't expect me to extricate that little tramp Elizabeth from Lucky's life all by myself. This little tango we do is going to get bloody and ugly if you cause Lucky any more grief. Oh, quite the opposite. Now, Lucky has been cuckolded by that little tart too many times. Now she's carrying his brother's child? I'm just trying to spare your son more grief. Right. And I'm Marie, cross-dressing consort to the Queen of Romania. You wouldn't spare Lucky anything. Well, if you insist, but if I get my way, you will definitely share in the benefits. Which would be? Elizabeth is carrying my great-grandchild. Now, Nicholas has some absurd notion of sharing custody after the child is born. Meanwhile, Elizabeth is holding Nicholas at arm's length because of some delusional hope that she'll get lucky back. So far, I'm not hearing my name in any of this. Just be patient. Luke, we all know that what's best for this new baby, this new Cassidine, is that the baby be raised by Cassidines as a Cassidine. Now, Elizabeth has to deal with Nicholas realistically or turn the child over to him outright. But as long as Lucky is in the picture, Elizabeth is going to cling to the hope that she can get him back, that she can play on his sympathies, that she, she's hoping that he will defend her. Well, that's up to Lucky. That's not up to me or you. Luke, we are realists, you and I. Now, look, I'm not going to live forever. <laughs> well, that's a relief. Why did I know you'd say that? Now, I'm not going to have another chance. And what does it mean to you? I mean, what harm is it for you to help me to see that my great-grandson is reared as one of my own? <laughs> what harm is it? Are you serious? Oh, God. What are you up to, you insane woman? Well, I'm so glad I can still amuse you. So what do you 
you know about Helena Cassidyne's stay in Port Charles? Not as much as I'd like to. That's what I was afraid of. She was in here earlier, so I'm sure that she's up to no good. She told me that she wants me to help her keep Elizabeth away from Lucky so that she can have that new rug rat all to herself. Anything to get your attention? Well, Just another round in the old boxing match. No, no, no. The only thing that makes Helena happier than knowing she's making me miserable is making sure I know that she's making me miserable. What I can't figure out is how that baby fits into it. It's an excuse to flirt. Do so at your own peril. Oh, hello, my dear. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's really none of your business. Well, I hope you're not exposing that Cassidyne child you're carrying to some dreadful virus. Hospitals are hotbeds of germs, you know. In fact, I was, I was wondering if, if it was a good idea for you to continue working during your pregnancy. <laughs> it's a pretty good bet, Helena, that whatever you think is good for me, I'm going to do the opposite. Oh, now that would be inadvisable, my dear. Especially since we're family now. I will live my life the way I choose without any advice from you. My dear, your transparent efforts to be noble and courageous are wasted on me. Now, I know the truth, Elizabeth. I spotted it from the very beginning, as you know. You are a narcissistic slut, greedy, needy of men's attentions, so manipulative from your wide staring eyes right down to the tips of your rosy little toes. Now, this pregnancy is really an inconvenience for you, but you will turn it to your advantage by playing on the sympathies of Nicholas and Lucky. Leave her the hell alone. Ah, as predicted. You couldn't be more protective of the child she's carrying if it was actually yours. 